interview three. Interview three was my maths interview at Jesus, the last one I had at Jesus. And it was by far and away one of the most terrifying experiences of my life. Um, okay, it wasn't that bad, but uh, maths has never been my strong point. So the, que so the questions they asked me, I uh, wasn't really too confident. The first question that they asked me in the interview was establishing the root of I. I think the actual dialogue when uh, Professor Nomorotsky said, uh, if I was to tell you that the root of I is minus one, would you believe me? To which I said, well, you are a professor of maths at Oxford, so I'm going to say yes, which made me laugh. Two ways of doing this problem, the nuts and bolts way or the clever clogs way, which will earn you brownie points. Nuts and bolts way, which I get a complex number of z is equal to a real part and an imaginary part. You then say, say that root i, oh, that's terrible. We then say that root i is equal to that complex number. Square both sides and equate the real and imaginary components. We know that 2ab has to equal 1 and a squared minus b squared h has to equal 0. Then you can establish that a equals b equals 1 over root 2. The clever goals way of doing it is to use Euler's formula with the Moynihan's formula which is basically that you can represent a complex number which has the real imaginary component uh, in the form e to the i theta. Now, the de Marvis theorem states that if you take the power of that, say e to the i n theta, then it, you just have cos n theta plus i sine n theta. As i equals e to the i pi by 2, if you don't believe me, look at an argon diagram, e to the i pi by 4 is going to be equal to i to the half, because it just multiplies both sides by the power of a half. Which you can then plug through, and it gives you the same results, which is good, because maths works. I haven't got a proper solution to this, I just have to try and plug it out now. Essentially the question they asked me was, for what values is sine x equals kx? What value of k is there only one solution? Only in the first uh, in the positive x direction, ignoring negative. Um, and again, I'm actually not too sure how you're supposed to answer this, but I think what you're supposed to do is just do it graphically. So k is, is just a line gradient k. So then what you can do is establish that, well, the only way that you're going to get one solution in a positive k is if you set the gradient such that it just intercepts here. Because ignoring the, the origin, then it's going to go bang. That's the limit. So you can take the gradient, k is dy by the x. The peak is 1, and you know that the distance in the x direction is 2 pi plus pi by 2, so 5 pi by 2. So the limit in the positive k direction is going to be k between five, um, 2 over 5 pi and infinity. And in the negative direction, anyway, you're going to get uh, one solution is if it just intersects the bottom. So, or k equals minus um, 2 or 3 pi. Don't quote me on that, I'm not entirely sure on The last question they asked me in this interview was to establish sine of 61 without using a calculator. <coughs> now, it kind of screams straight away Taylor expansion because Taylor expansion is all about no taking knowledge at one point and then saying, well, if we know the gradient and then the curvature and then the curvature and the curvature, and it, it just, the more times you add, the more accurate your approximation gets. Which is exactly what I've done here. I've just expanded it out. Um, incidentally, you need to do this in radians, sine of 60, sine of pi by 3. If you don't know and love radians already, he will soon learn to. Um, so yeah, you just, you just expand it out. I'm only going to use two terms because it gives you a pretty decent level of accuracy. Um, and the other thing I need to point out is just that pi by 180 is equivalent to 1 degree. And if you plug that in, due to the magic of editing, that works out as 0.874, which is about right. Interview 4. This was my last interview, and it was my only interview at St. Peter's, which is where they uh, accepted me. So, 
this has to take the place of the physics interview, the maths interview, and the general interview all at the same time. First question I asked me was just like the first interview I had, why did you choose to do physics? Really didn't listen to my answer. The first physics -y question they asked me was this. I had two waveforms moving towards each other on a piece of string, and they gave me, it was actually six diagrams, but I can't draw, so I thought I'd just do three. And I had to pick out which ones uh, would actually happen. In this case, in case you're wondering, the answer is A and C. The next question that they asked me was this question. Which, uh, essentially, they just said to me straight off, calculate the power of a wind turbine. And I was like, well, which one? Like, any wind turbine. So I established the parameters. R being the radius of the wind turbine. And V, the speed of the air which is flying past it. Now, obviously, the speed of a wind turbine comes from uh, the kinetic energy of the air moving past it. Now, so this is assuming 100% efficiency. You can just add it in a turn and at the end, it's fine. Um, but essentially, what you want is to work out the kinetic energy of a column of air per unit time flowing through it. So the kinetic energy is just half mv squared. So the kinetic energy of this column of air is a half uh, rho in the density of the air, pi r squared, vt, that's in just uh, the length that's covered, v squared. And then obviously per unit time, we just cancel out that t, and you have rho pi r squared v cubed v2. The next question you asked me was a bit more of a maths based one, and it was one of the weirdest questions I think I had, when they just said to me, what do you know about the second derivative of a function? To which I said, well, it's a curvature, it's the rate of change of the gradient. I said, okay, plot dy by dx squared, second derivative, equals minus y. I don't know. So I just said, well, plot it. And if you think about it, if it starts off as, assuming it starts off as normal, then it just means that the curvature is negative if it's in the positive y. Uh, sorry, that really should be labelled as well. Um, and it's negative, so it's positive in uh, negative y. So basically, you have a function like this. So the curvature is all like that one, because it's symmetric. It's somehow very familiar now. Which makes sense, when you think about it. Because if you let y equal sine x, then you learn quickly that dy by dx is cos x. And the second derivative is minus sine x. So, minus y. And you learn that simple harmonic oscillators is something you recognise. And then they extended it, what if it was minus a thousand y, in which case it would just be very frequent. Which then, in the case of an oscillating system, corresponds to the frequency of the oscillation. The last question that they asked me in the St. Peter's interview was, if you're in a room with n people, what value does n have to be for there to be a certainty of you finding someone with your birthday in the room? To which, well, there is no value which says a certainty because obviously it's based on probability. Probability is not my strong point. What you could say is that the probability is equal to 1 minus the probability of everybody in the room having a different birthday to you. So, probability of having a different birthday to you, one person is 364 over 365, because there's 364 other days to choose from in the year. Now, for n people, that's 364 over 365 to the n. And the probability of one person having the same birthday to you is then 1 minus 364 over 365 to the n. There was one more question, but when I wrote out my interview uh, notes, I clearly got distracted because my interview notes just stopped. Um, there was one more question, I, I can't remember what it is. I'm sorry. I hope people found this useful. Uh, please uh, comment below or send me a message uh, if you want to find out more, if you want me to give you specific advice. I've helped out quite a few people by now, so I'm getting pretty good at it, I think. Um, and yeah, I'd love to hear from you. I kind of do this just because I want to help people to get some help that I know I didn't have a first-hand account from Oxford. So I'm just trying to do that for people. But yeah, I hope you go well, and I wish you the very best uh, with your applications. Take care.